I've got a lot of strips cut here and they look like they're perfect for segments. And I did just cut them out of boards like this with the intentions of making segments. Apparently March is segment month. There's two channels that are promoting a little challenge and they're calling it Segments MM. And that's Heather has a channel and Leo has a channel. I'll put the exact name of the channel and a link to that in the description. I have maple and I have sepile. This wedge is for 24 segments per ring. I've got it in here. It's up against my rails. I've used it before so I know it works. Here's my stock. I've got a line here. I'm going to call that the top. I've got a line over here that goes against the fence. I want that to be the glue joint. That's why that's going to be up. I want this to be what we see when we turn it because the grain is really nice there and it's pretty flat looking here. So that's why I'm doing that. I'll get the stop set so I cut the right length. We'll cut a few pieces but I won't make you watch all of them and when I get them all cut I'll show you how the rings get glued together. So I'll be right back. So I did a dry fit on this ring and they fit good so I'll go ahead and glue this one together but the rest will look just like this so I probably won't show any more of the gluing of the rings but there are a few other operations that I do need to do. All right, that's it. So I, I'll have a 11 rings when we're through gluing these up, but my next step will be turning those 11 rings into 22 rings. So I'll see you when it's time to do that. I have this ring hot glued onto my bandsaw cutting fixture. It slides this direction so I can make my cut. It slides in and out that way so I can adjust how wide it needs to be. I glued this ring up in all the rings twice as thick as what I wanted so that I could cut it and get two rings out of one. It's much easier to glue a thicker segment together than it is a thin one like 3 8 thick. And I think it's faster. This is more than 3 quarters. That leaves me enough to trim this down and clean them up so that they are 3 8 each. But my drawing shows it as being a three-quarter inch thick row. Let's go ahead and cut one of these and you can see how it works. So this is how I hot glue the rings onto the fixture. Just line it up flush with the bottom of that piece of plywood. And I'll just put four little dabs of hot glue on there. I'll let those sit for a few minutes and we'll cut another one. Okay, that's the last one. Now I can make a base and start gluing all this together. This is the first ring and I'll be gluing it against this walnut disc which is going to be the base. And I'm doing something a little different here. I'm using this metal faceplate ring that I made. That's screwed into a piece of beech and the walnut and beech are glued together. 
I'm doing this because I might be taking this out quite a bit for clamping. I'm not totally sure, but just in case. Plus, I don't want to try to turn this around and cut a tenon off of it. It's going to be pretty long. So let's move this up here and get it glued. And the jaws are expanded in the opening. And this, this is half of the ring that you saw earlier. So let's go ahead and get it glued together. And probably, I think for this one, I'll just get the glue on here and then we'll put it back in. Okay, that's all we need to do to this one. I'm adjusting this segment here to create a little stagger and I'll do that with each layer. I glued a couple more rings on last night. I didn't show that but it was the same as what I did on the other ones. Changing how I locate them now. I have a cone turned that will fit inside of this ring and that will locate it in the right place. I'll get this glued and clamped and let it sit for about 10 minutes and I'll pull this back and put a flat board against it to make sure I have good pressure. So I'll go ahead and glue this one. I'll let it sit here. I don't need the lathe today. I want to just get this glued up and I've got things to straighten up here in the shop. So we'll go ahead and glue this one and I'll come back when we're a little farther down and probably get halfway and we'll turn at least the inside of this because I may not be able to reach it once it gets full height. It's actually going to be fairly long. I've got five sections glued on here with the base being counted as section one. This is the rings that I have left to glue on. So I think I'll glue one more section on, then I'll turn the inside while I can still reach it and probably even sand it at least up to maybe uh, 220. Before I glue any more rings here, I need to create a shape. And I need to do that so I can reach in and cut the inside. But I need the outside shape before I cut the inside. So I'm going to use my half inch bowl gouge. I'm going to turn around 720 RPM. So getting the inside of the segments round was a little difficult because I needed to lean over quite a ways and I ended up blocking the camera so I decided not to show that part. Once I got the inside round I was able to make some nice cuts and that's what you're looking at here. Not too bad. So use a negative rake scraper right down there and then we'll glue some more rings on it. Okay, I think I've got a couple more rings on. Still have a, a big enough opening to get in there and sand it.
Each ring was close to 3 8 when I bandsawed it, but I still needed to make sure it was flat and brought it right down to the dimension. I only have two more rings to glue on. Once I do, I really can't reach in here and work on it. Right now I can. I have it sanded up to about the last four rings and blend it in. But I need to do a little more blending and I'll use my homemade naked brick scraper, kind of ground for a bowl, bowl scraper. And it's doing a good job. We'll get that done. I'm just blending about four rows down and I've gotten rid of the hump. Okay, I've just got these two rings here to blend in and we'll have the inside finished. About 700 RPM, half inch bolt out. I just sharpened my half inch bowl gouge. I put some pencil lines here in the middle. I don't want to take anything else off here and that direction. I've got the wall established a little less than 3 8 The inside's all finished. Everything I take off now will be on the outside. I need to blend from here down to there and I'll probably stop now and then to make sure I don't have any surprises and find myself getting thin. About 875 RPM. Feels just fine. Let's see what I just did here. Oh, that's good. Well, I need to decide on this base now. I that wasn't really the shape I was thinking about, but it, it looks interesting. But I'm kind of thinking it just needs to keep going straight down. But that looks that looks okay as well. There's no finish cuts on it, so let's have a look at that. tapering down. Now before I sand, I, I do feel a couple little ridges here. And I want to use the negative rake scraper to try to blend those together. And I feel them like that too. There's one right here. Pretty good. So I'm going to start sanding with 120 grit with a lathe in reverse.
I'm just going to use the two inch disc on that first sanding and I'll switch to paper and one reason is it'll conform. The other is these are all segments except for the base and the grain is running this way. So I'll be sanding with the grain and I shouldn't be putting scratches across it. I'll go through from 120 now to 400 with paper. Time for one of everyone's favorite things, and that's putting finish on the turning. Well, this time I'm using the Minwax water-based sanding sealer, and it's not quite as exciting as putting shellac or lacquer on, but you'll see why here. It's just kind of milky looking. It might, might look better, but it's kind of, uh, well, <laughs> it's just not as cool as putting lacquer on, but it will be, I guarantee it will be. This is first of probably two coats of the sanding sealer and I like to put it on real thick. Let it soak in and I'll wipe this off here in a few minutes. Okay, I will get another coat of this on and then I'll get the polycrylic on and the polycrylic looks exactly the same as putting this on so we probably don't even need to see that so I'll be back a little later. Well even though I did say that putting the polycrylic on was exactly the same I decided to show you the last coat going on and I put it on the same but now I'm very carefully wiping it down leaving a very thin film like that. If you want to see the exact procedure of how I use the water-based sanding sealer and polyacrylic, I'll put a link in the description for it because that's all we talk about there is doing that. Okay, I'm going to let this sit for probably four hours and we'll go over it with some abrasive tape. It's pretty shiny right now but I always like to do this. It just makes it feel a lot smoother. And I do like to run the lathe in reverse when I do this. Also, I have a video on using abrasive paste and polish. And if you're interested in seeing more details, I'll put a link in the description for that as well. So I'm going to get this polished up. And we'll come back and I'll have to part this off of that glue block. So I'll see you then. I'm just finishing up buffing out the Axe Polish Restoring Paste and I want to show you this and this is why I chose the direction to cut the segments. Look at the chatoyance coming off of each of those segments. There's so much more detail in the wood on that direction that's why it's lighting up like it is. It is just beautiful. Well it's time to part this off of the glue block. I've decided to come up just past the glue block, almost the width of this parting tool. I want it that short, but the other thing is if you cut right on that glue line, it just might come apart before you're ready. So I just sharpened up my parting tool. I start out about 575 RPM. kept cutting while that compressor was going on and when I did stop and shut the camera off I wanted to check things I saw that I was almost cut through and being the flat grain it has it just kind of snapped off so I didn't show that. 
all done. I think it turned out okay. Finished nine inches tall. It's five inches at the largest diameter. The top is about three and three quarters and the base is three and a quarter inch. I used 504 segments in this turning. 252 sapile and 250 maple and the walnut base. I used Minwax water-based sanding sealer and Minwax polyacrylic for the finish. I then went over it with X abrasive paste and polish. I have a video for doing each of those processes and I'll put a link in the description because I could spend a lot more time in detail on how I use it. So I talked about flat grain. I wanted to make sure I was clear with that. This is flat grain. That's how they cut most boards. They get more pieces out of a tree that way. It's flat. It's kind of plain looking a lot of times. The edge of the board is where I think you get the beauty. That's the piece of maple. That's the piece of sapile. Now that looks pretty nice with flat grain, but it has a lot of things going on and cutting the segments, I think those dark lines might stagger and take away the beauty of it. And I think the edge grain is much nicer here. That's why I chose it that way and I just wanted to try to explain that. I decided to make this turning based on hearing about the Segment MM challenge that Heather and Leo have. And I'll put a link to their channels in the description. You can check them out. They do really nice work, so go ahead and check them out. So that's it uh, until the next one, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, do me a favor and click that like button. And while you're there, it would be great if you could share the video around. Those two things will really help my channel grow. Leave a comment. I read them all, and I do my best to answer them all. Thanks to all my subscribers. And if you're not, please consider doing so. I do a mix of all types of turnings. Some are simple and some are complex, so let me know your favorite. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.